It was a time in my life where I went through something extraordinary. Couldn't remember my own name, couldn't remember Laura's name, couldn't remember Jake's name. Who am I? Who is this woman? Who are all these people around me? I had no idea what was going on. We had been married for about five years. We'd just had Jake. Jake was about 15 months old. He'd gone to bed, but then, as is the case often with children, he'd woken up again. Dan went up to settle him, and then I just heard an almighty bang. So obviously I called out, no reply, so I ran up the stairs to see. And he was just lying on the floor um, in our bedroom. I just had something had happened and he just collapsed. By the time the ambulance came and they saw him, he was starting to come round a bit, but seemed very confused. I just remember a series of questions being asked, really, really basic questions like, what's your name, what's your wife's name, what's your child's name? But for the life of me, I, I just couldn't get them. I couldn't get them at all, couldn't remember my own name, couldn't remember Laura's name, couldn't remember Jake's name. I just remember sitting up and, and seeing all these shadows kind of coming at me. Processing in all of this afterwards, um, I, I believe that that was the, the enemy and demons who were there in the hospital with me because I heard a lot of voices at the time with all of this going on. And it was really nerve wracking and really traumatic. We kind of managed to work out and piece together that um, he'd lost about 15 years of his memory at that point. He could only remember things from his early childhood up to teenage years. No doctors really knew what had happened, so we, part of it we were just kind of left to figure it out ourselves and get on with it. When I was discharged from hospital, I remember coming home and walking into a house where there's all these pictures of me up on the wall, but I had no idea. I had no idea where these memories were from, no idea where the pictures were taken. It was feeling comfortable in your own home. But I know that for everyone around me, everyone that loved me, the church included, it was, it was massively, massively difficult to see us going through what we were going through. It was a good three months. Those of you who know me know I'm the sort of person who just gets on with it. Like, throw anything at me, I, I can just carry on, put my head down, get, Dan's laughing because this is what I'm like all the time. It actually took a few friends coming to me and saying, you are allowed to say this is rubbish, you know. I had to look after our son, I had to look after Dan. Um, but at the same time, stopping and saying, right God, we need, we need a change here, we need a miracle here, we need something to happen here. Laura had filled me in about giving my life to Jesus, what it was that we believed as a couple and as a family. But the love that I felt when I first came back to the church, it was, it was overwhelming because I didn't know who anyone was. But just to be in that environment, I think, was the start of my, my own healing journey. We couldn't have got through it without our church family at that time. Obviously, um, we were all praying and believing that Dan's men, we would come back, that things would go back to normal. Being a very practical person, um, after you know a little while, I was like, well, maybe this is just our new life now. This is our new normal. Yeah. Um, I was a little excited about maybe having to have a second wedding. You never know, <laughs> that could have been good. Throughout this period for about three weeks, I just remember these words going around in my head, Christ in me, the hope of glory. And I mentioned this to Laura and Laura just said, oh, this is a song that you absolutely fell in love with when we were at a conference called Grapevine. And as Laura started to play the song and the words resonated as it got to the chorus, Christ in me, the hope of glory. And in an instant, about 75% of the memory came back. I was there looking in the mirror and I was just weeping, weeping. And I just said to Laura, I remember, I remember. And I just remember crying. I just remember Laura being overjoyed and ecstatic. I think the weird thing for me is that I remember not remembering, but I could remember all the times that I'd reintroduce myself to these people. But obviously then all the memories that I'd had of them, it all came flooding back. We now have a thing that like, if I'm in the house and I hear a bang, Dan has to always shout, I'm okay. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great testimony to remember as a family because obviously uh, Jake was very young when this happened and our other three children weren't even around at that point. Mm. But sometimes they ask questions, they're like, oh yeah, uh, what happened when daddy lost his memory? And they want to know. And, and it's good because we can share it with them and be like, well, this yeah. is what happened, but God, who you know and you love, 
healed daddy and he's so much better now. For me, I didn't know that God was working. I didn't know who God was at this time. And I didn't know that I still had a belief in him. It just goes to show that the power of God is always at work. And he restored me through the power of a song, through the power of music. It has given me absolutely no fear when it comes to sharing the gospel because I know that I know that I know that God saves and God still heals today. Christ in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory.